C'est bon de voir hein. Okay, any questions before we continue on to the 21? Okay, so two more classes before you exam three. Okay, so do the practice for each chapter. Uh, I saw uh, most of you did the practice for chapter 20. Yeah, keep doing the practice. So chapter 21, the practice due date is April 18th. Okay, I also do the homework as soon as possible. If you have any questions, problems, uh, let me know on the homework. Yeah, I, I'm also prepared for the lab final test. Uh, so the lab final test uh, you will have the test on the on your scheduled lab time, lab days. Uh, so probably next week, I am going to uh, send you uh, Excel file uh, to use it to do the lab practical. Because on the lab test, one question uh, is uh, to the lab, uh, so measure absorbance. So obviously we are doing the remote labs. Uh, so similar as what we do before, uh, we are going to use uh, one Excel file, and uh, you do the uh, dilution. You take a concentrated solution, dilute 10 times. Um, so we made an Excel file. That Excel file requires um, mic uh, macro, which means uh, some of those uh, video basic. So I will email you the uh, that uh, Excel file uh, next week and make sure you practice on it and uh, make sure your your Excel file on your computer on your device. Uh, can open that file, can do the measurements of absorbance. All right, uh, just feel free, whenever you have a question, raise your hand. All right, so we were starting from here, uh, we left over Tuesday, we are starting uh, write nuclear equation for nuclear transmutation. Um, so in this type of equation, um, it maybe become a little more complicated because you can have more than one ragtime. Uh, you can write the usual way, as you can see here, uh, ragtime product. Uh, you balance the atomic number, so seven plus two equals eight plus one. Then you balance the mass number, 14 plus uh, four is 18, 17 plus one is 18. Uh, so uh, there's also a, a, a short notation or condensed way to write those kind of uh, nuclear equation for the nuclear transmutations. Uh, so you write uh, the so-called target nucleus, which means the nucleus in the ragtime, and then you write uh, the parenthesis 
inside the parentheses, you write those uh, smaller particles. So the first smaller particle will be the particle you use to bombard the, your reactant nucleus. In this case, we use uh, HE, which means uh, helium uh, nucleus, and also called the alpha particles. So therefore, we, call, we, we use alpha. Uh, so then in the parentheses, the second smaller particle by convention uh, will be the smaller particle in the product. So in the product, we can say this is a, a, a proton, a proton. So proton, the name is P. Uh, then you close the parentheses and write the product nucleus. So our product nucleus is this uh, oxygen 17. Uh, so as we notice uh, from tube discuss, uh, so this uh, two location here, uh, so your ejected particle and your product nucleus. In the equation, you might oxygen, write oxygen first, but here, so the sequence is kind of out of order. So you put uh, the proton uh, in, in ahead of this uh, product nucleus and also inside the parentheses. So then we can do, we can use the template. So this will be the template, uh, not really the answer. Uh, to write the condensed notation for this reaction. Uh, so we can say this is the target nucleus. So our target nucleus in this example is this oxygen 16. So you just write oxygen, and this eight means atomic number, 16 means mass number. Uh, so that's follow the template to this part. Then we use parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, our bombardi particle. So in this case, our bombardi particle is this proton, so therefore we write P. Uh, so then in the parentheses, you also write what is the ejected particle. So ejected particle here is uh, the helium nucleus, also ca called the alpha uh, particles. So that's finished what is inside the parentheses. Uh, so the product nucleus in this case is this, uh, nitrogen 13, so you write nitrogen, atomic number seven, mass number 13. All right, uh, so next we're gonna study the uh, kinetics of uh, radio activities. Okay, so what, what that is, is kind of a review of what we learned in the chapter uh, 14. Because in chapter 14, we studied uh, chemical kinetics. Uh, yes, wrong question? Yeah, can you just go back to the problem for one second? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what I show here is a, uh, show a nuclear equation, then you, we use this template and write this answer. So this is our answer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so uh, the kinetics of radioactive decay, uh, we will review chapter 14. In chapter 14, we studied those uh, read law. So read law can be differential or integrated. Uh, so we know radioactive radioactive decay for any radioactive decay, all those different decay way like alpha decay, beta decay, positron emission, uh, they are all first order process. Uh, so first order process, and uh, we know in, uh, in chemical reaction chapter, we, we see there is a differential rate law, uh, which is written uh, as uh, so it's very similar as you saw this one, so rate equals k times, what we saw before in chapter 14 is rate equals k times concentration, like concentration of one reactant to the 
n's power or m's power. Uh, so here uh, we can use uh, number of so this is number. Okay. Yeah, so number of uh, nuclei. Uh, so then K is uh, very similar to what, what we saw before in chapter 14, the rate constant, rate constant K. Uh, so therefore, this is not really uh, new or not, uh, not, not really new to us. So we know uh, this this type of equations. Um, so then we can uh, calculate uh, this uh, rate constant k uh, by using the half life. So this is a half. So this is half life. Uh, well, we know the definition of half life is the time required for half of a nuclei sample to decay. Uh, so I will show you one uh, graph uh, later to uh, visually to, to review what is the half-life. Uh, so, so for here, we just see if we have half-life, uh, we can calculate this k and vice versa. If we have k, we can calculate this half life. Um, just a note in the last line here. Uh, so radioactive decay does not have any activation energy. Uh, so this is one question in the homework of chapter 21. Uh, even though activation energy is common in chemical reactions, um, the chemical reaction has chemical bond to break. Uh, in the nuclear reactions, they don't have a chemical bond to break. Uh, so therefore, there is no uh, activation energy. OK, so then how do we uh, measure the radioactivity, uh, or how do we measure the, the rate of radioactivity? Uh, we know when we measure the chemical reactions, we measure how much uh, the concentration change for a certain period of time. Uh, so the radioactivity uh, is measured uh, uh, how much uh, this sample decay as a uh, per uh, minute or per second. Uh, so the the unit uh, by convention are two uh, common units. One is the so-called SI unit. So the SI unit is the Bacquero. Uh, so, so this is named after one French scientist who the first uh, scientist to cover radioactivity. Uh, so this is the SI unit, which means uh, one disintegration per second or one activity per second. Uh, so then Curie is Madame Curie. She worked with uh, Bacquier. Uh, so uh, we has have this unit named after her. Uh, so this is a, a 3.7 times 10 to the positive 10, this integration per second. Uh, so this integration per second, so, so this one or this one, you really write in a shorthand notation, we, we call that DPS, so DPS. Uh, okay, so once we know that, and uh, this I take out from the homework, uh, so we can uh, use this rate law, calculate um, uh, or solve this problem. Uh, so we are going to use our rate law, uh, differential rate law. which uh, give you the uh, rate equals k times n. Uh, so rate is like a, uh, the uh, DPS, uh, k is the rate constant, n is how many those uh, nuclei in the sample. 
So we can use this equation to calculate how much A. And then once we get how much A, uh, we can uh, find out how much more. So therefore, our uh, complete plan uh, of solving this problem is to uh, using this equation find n, and then once we find how much n, how much number of this uh, uh, radioactive uh, isotope in the smoke detector, then we can use our Gaussian number to change our Gaussian number to change the number in the morals, uh, so that. Um, we are given the model mass. So once we know uh, moles, we can we can change into grams by using the model mass. All right. Uh, so therefore, you first using this equation find n. Um, so using this equation find n, you can see you are given this rate. So this is the rate. Uh, so that, so obviously you also need to find a k. Uh, so k, so to find a k, you use the half life. I just write t one half. So given t one half is four, five, eight years. Uh, so let's just do a conversion, convert four, five, eight years into how many seconds. So let's convert how many this years, how many seconds, which kind of a straightforward. So we'll write four, five, eight year as our usual way. So we write this number just over one. And then we know one year. Let's say 365 days. And uh, then we know one day is 24 hours. And then one hour is 60 minutes. And then one minute, 60 second. So after this few conversion fractions, uh, we can see we cancel out all those uh, uh, units. So year cancel out, day cancel out, hour cancel out, minutes will get a second. So we'll get how much a second. Uh, so therefore, we do the calculation and we get 1.4443 times 10 to the positive 10. All right, uh, so then next we will use uh, the given rate to find out, uh, so this rate is 1.75 micro, so this means micro, a CI, uh, so we have this equation here, CI, this much dPS, and then we will review those prefix. So what is the micro, what is the pico, what is nano, uh, what is milli? So then we know uh, one micro, that means micro equals 10 to the negative six, and then one p, not a proton, but a prefix called pico. The pico is 10 to the negative 12. And one a, not a neutron, or nano, is 10 to the negative 9. All right, so therefore, if we start with this given 1.75, micro CI to use our way, and then we see Y micro CI is 10 to the negative six CI. So 
that we use the definition of CI. So when CI is 3.7 times 10 to the positive 10 uh, DP, DPS. The DPS. So we find out this is 6, 4, 7, 5, 0 DPS. All right. Uh, so now we have uh, both the rate and uh, the K. We will use, uh, so we'll plug rate and K into rate equals k times n to find to find n. Uh, so the rate we find out is uh, six four seven five zero. Uh, DPI you can write this integration per second. So equals k. Uh, so k. Uh, so let me go back to to adding the the unit for the k. I don't think I have I I, I think inside the unit. Uh, so k here. Oh sorry, we didn't we didn't already finish this part. We will find this uh, half life. We don't find a k yet. Sorry. Uh, so now let me finish that. So then we will see. Uh, this is the half life, so this this guy here. Let me also use this line here. This is confusing. Okay, so this n and this number is actually t half life. Okay, so so we'll see k equals ln two divided by t1 half. And then just use your calculator. So find out what, what is Rn2. Then divide up, then divide by this 1.4443 times 10 to the positive 10. And here the second. So this has no unit. So therefore, we take this uh, Ln, Ln2 divided by this uh, T1 half and read those uh, 4, 3. Okay, so you find that the, hmm, uh, so the, the K, uh, now we will see the unit and then also see the number. Okay, so four. Oh, I don't want to write four. I don't want one point. What is it for? So it's four point seven nine nine zero times ten to the negative eleven. So see this second here. So that means it become. One over second. Okay, so now we have the number for k. We have the unit for k. Now let's go to the next slide. Uh, okay, so we have k four point seven nine nine zero times ten to the negative eleven. The unit is also one over second. Then this is n. So n is unknown. Uh, so find n. And obviously this is a very simple equation. Uh, so this s s comes out on the two sides. This integration means uh, one nuclear. So therefore this just gives us uh, how many this integration after we divide. That means how many number of nuclei. Right. Uh, so uh, let's go to the next slide. We take uh, uh, six four seven five zero 
this integration uh, per second divided by 4.7990 times 10 to the negative 11, one over second. So this one over second, one over second comes out, so therefore we just get how much particles. So what you find, the N equals 1.3492 10 to the positive 15. Okay. So remember our plan is find N, then find the more, then find the gram. Okay. So that's our plan. So now we have N. Just review what you learned in chapter 113. So you 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 have a number. You see, you want to see how many moles in that number? If you have Avogadro number, you have one mole. Okay. So whatever number you have, you divide by the Avogadro number. So that is how much in one mole. So that's ten to the positive twenty-three. And that will be one mole. Okay. So then we will use the model mass. So we see one mole. For the given problem is 241 gram. And uh, you see the more and more cancel out. So what is the number is 5.40 times 10 to the negative seven and gram. All right, uh, any questions? Okay, uh, so this is the graph I uh, tell you. Uh, so we usually show you what is the half life. Um, so the Integrated law uh, for the first order, well, I'm going to talk about it here. So half life can see from this graph. Let's see if you start with uh, uh, some amount. Let's see, you can start in any place. Start from here, easier because this is time zero. So if you have 10 gram, and then you want to reduce to uh, uh, half of 10 gram, so be five gram. So five gram is here. Uh, so let's say 10 gram is starting as times zero, then how long does it take to reduce this 10 gram to five gram? So if you have the graph, you go to here, then you find the time. So it's about 27 or 26 years. So for this example, from the graph, you can see our T half life equals 27 years. And then you can see from this half, uh, from this five uh, to like a 2.25, so that's another half life, and, and so on. So that's the definition of half life. Um, so um, we know the definition of half life now. And then we are going to say what is the so called integrated rate law for the first order. So it's very similar to what you learn in, uh, in chapter 14. So in chapter 14, we will write something like that. So our concentration of one reactant at time t after we started the chemical reaction compared with reactant molarity at time zero, which means the beginning of the chemical reaction. So we have this. Uh, negative k times t. So that's what we learned in chapter 14. So here uh, we can still write uh, this four method very similar. We have the ln function. Uh, so we're here we will have a different way to representing this concentration. So we can use number of uh, nuclei. Uh, so this is the number of nuclei. So n is number of nuclei. Uh, so t means um, after we started 
the reaction. Zero means the beginning of the reaction. Or you can use mass. Uh, so again, mass, just mass. So what is T and what is zero? So similar convention. So T is the T time, so T second or T minute or T years after the reaction started. Zero means zero second or zero minute or zero year, which means the beginning of the reaction. Or you can use rate. Uh, so you can use what is the DPS at the beginning and what is the DPS after like T, T second or T year or T minute. So depending on the problem, uh, you want to use either one of these three equations. Uh, so this uh, just uh, give you some idea, some of this uh, half-life and type of decay for several radioactive isotopes. What are you going to use later on? Uh, you are going to use, so you are going to use this carbon 14 decay. You can, we can use this for the radioactive dating. For radioactive date, which means you can use the radioactivity of those uh, some samples. Uh, so those samples have carbon 14 in it. If you can measure what is the rate and or how much of the carbon 14 in it, you can find out the age. So this actually is the age of some of these objects. So another one you want to notice is uh, uh, this uh, uranium 238. So that has a very, very long half life, about 4.5 billion years. Uh, so that's it useful because, because we can use this uh, type of radioactive material to find out what is the, what is the age as uh, some of those rock. Uh, so therefore we can say, uh, get some idea what is the age of our verse or some of those other uh, objects. Okay, so the so-called radio metric dating, and uh, uh, so you can use uh, the integrated rate law uh, to find out the age of those objects. Uh, so as we saw other slide, carbon fourteen is one common nucleus they use. Um, so this has a half life, but uh, 50, 57 hundred years. Uh, so it's good, but 50,000 years uh, older than that. Uh, so there's not too many carbon-14 left over. So it's not that accurate. Uh, so obviously, if very, very long uh, or very old age some objects, uh, if they have like uh, lead and uranium in it, and you can also use uh, uh, this uranium to, to lead ratio. So this means a ratio. And this picture show you uh, what happened uh, or where the carbon-14 comes from and then where the carbon-14 goes. Uh, so, uh, so next, this example is, uh, as we find out, um, we have a rock. And this rock uh, has um, the lead uh, to six in it. Um, so the homer 2, 6, and 8 in, in that rock, uh, they find out a ratio uh, between the lead 2, 6 and uranium 2, 38. Uh, so then we are assuming uh, where the lead uh, 2, 6 come from. Uh, so obviously you can, think, you can think about if you have a rock and the rock uh, in the natural environment, uh, maybe collecting some of the lead, um, because the human use uh, lead, um, but uh, usually the lead we use is uh, not 206, it's 208. 
uh, so therefore we are assuming uh, this led to six only from the decay of uh, uranium 238. So that is a very good reasonable assumption. Uh, so once we have this assumption, and uh, you are going to use this uh, formula to solve the problem. So the formula will be Ln mass of T and then mass of zero equals negative K times T. Okay, so for the first time, you might feel a little bit uh, difficult to 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 find out or to understand what we mean by the time t, what we mean by time zero. So think about uh, that rock that produced a long time ago, and uh, a long time ago, which means t as a t years ago. So t year ago that rock in the form. And then at that time, at two years ago, that rock has no PB206 in it. Um, I have some other material. So, so we see only in terms of these two, two nuclei, nuclei, so only this uranium 238. All right, uh, so therefore, uh, that, that, that amount of t years ago, so that time will be zero. So now our t years later, so now in those days, so called that is our t. All right, uh, so by uh, the given information, so it tell you that tell you that rock for every one milligram of uranium. So what it means we measure this ratio in in in, in the modern days. So this ratio, uh, so one milligram uranium two thirty eight proportional to zero point two five seven milligram of TB206 is not all okay, like uh, today. So therefore we can assume in, uh, uh, because in this, uh, in this uh, equation to this ratio, uh, so therefore we can start by assuming, uh, so this just like uh, we, right now we have one, milligram of uranium 238. So let's say this was the mass, mass T uh, for uranium. Uh, so now you say, why you want to uh, um, concentrate or why you want to just worry about the mass of uranium? Well, uranium 238 is the radioactive material. So you don't worry about the lead. But you need the information of the lead to find out how much uranium we have at the beginning. So by reading this question, analyze this question, you can see for today now, the mass T is this one milligram of uranium 238. So then the, the problem is what is the mass? Mass zero. So mass zero, let's say, it's right equals this one milligram plus something else. Uh, that something else is some of the uranium decay, decayed to produce this lead. So I, I'll show you this uh, radio decay uh, chain reaction. So we start with uranium here, and it goes through quite a few processes, then finally come to lead. So that's our reactant, and this is our 
products. So no matter how many steps going backward, forward for the atomic number, um, but you can see there's just a simple one-to-one -one ratio. So you can think about just one uranium-238 produce one lead-206 plus some other product. So other products, um, it's important for the environment, but it does not matter for us for this program. So what you see is just one uranium and one lead. Okay, so you still have this one milligram level over, so whatever at the beginning, so it should be one milligram more, because at the beginning you have more uranium, so uranium decay becomes lead. So how much more at the beginning? So this is at the beginning. Well, so one milligram plus something else, plus what? Plus those uranium decayed into lead. So next slide, we'll find out this question mark. Right, so we see that from that equation, from that uh, decay series, so we see uranium-238 will decay into lead-206 plus other product on the measure. So what we saw here is the one and the one ratio. So just kind of review what you learn in those conversions in CAM 113. And uh, you start with uh, the, the given uh, how much milligram of the lead, and then just convert into how much milligram of uranium. So if we write 0 0.257, uh, milligram of lead so to do this conversion uh, so many different ways one way is use uh, the model mass uh, so just see here uh, we will first convert this uh, milligram into gram right and then we are, we are going to use the model mass. So for those uh, isotopes, uh, you can use this number to a very good uh, uh, accuracy as the mass number. So if I tell you lead 206, that means uh, you have uh, 206 gram for one more. Uh, so you can see the milligram, milligram comes out. So, so, so after this few, two conversions, what you get is more of, of lead. Then we can see one more of uh, Pb, is one more of uranium. So then after this, you see, yes, what is the model mass of uranium? So as, as we see before, you can use this 238, which is actually a mass number, but to a very good accuracy. So that will be also the model mass of uranium. And then you want to convert into uh, milligrams. So you just write one gram and one thousand milligrams. Okay, so that will finish our conversions. Therefore, what you find out is how much uranium-238 decayed to produce that 0 0.257 milligram of lead. Now you adding that together with the one milligram we have uh, uh, today, and then you get how much, uh, how much uh, milligram at the beginning when that rock is produced. So I want to show you uh, a summary. So after this few conversions, the milligram comes out, uh, gram comes out, more, more comes out. Uh, so you pretty much see your 
uh, this 1,000 kind of out. So therefore, uh, when you don't have time, you can simply write this ratio uh, is a ratio to so 0 0.257 milligram and then 238 and then 206. I can multiply here. So therefore, all those conversion fractions just conceptually. So in your really calculations, so what's really the number you want to enter in your calculator, just these three numbers. So 0 0.297 milligram of uranium-238 decay, right? So now we find our question mark. Okay, so therefore, when the rock is uh, formed a T years ago, there is 1.0 plus 0 0.297 equals 1.297 milligram of uranium-238 in A. Okay. So now, in, in today, there's only one milligram. So that's mass T. So T years ago, we have 1.297. This milligram, this milligram is cancel out. Then equals negative uh, uh, negative k times t. Okay. So your problem is to find out what is the t. So what do you think? How can you find the t? So right now you you don't also you don't you also don't know what is the k. Any way to find out the k? Okay, so to find the k, remember our way is k equals ln2 divided by t one half. Okay, so we'll go to next slide. Find T, then plug into this, uh, find K, then plug into this equation to find T. Oh, you know, create the next slide. So let me read some of those and just I'll do the calculation here. Okay, any questions? I had one question. Okay, go ahead. Um, where do we get the, when you say that the rock is formed T years ago, um, where do we get the one from when adding to the 0.297? Okay, uh, come from the question. So, the, okay. uh, so you can see here, so a rock has 0 0.257 milligrams of lead for every one gram of uranium-238, which means those, this ratio is what you measured like today. So if you measure like in today, okay. so today you can see I measure there's some gram of uranium 238. So then you divide. So then you also find some of those uh, gram of uh, lead. So then what you, what, once you divide, you find the ratio. So for every one milligram, for every one gram of uranium 238, there are this much of, uh, of lead. Okay. So therefore, we can we can just take this ratio as how much uh, milligram of uranium we have, and then we will say if we have one milligram, 
and then we will have that much lead. Uh, so that much lead is coming from the uranium. So, so therefore, at the beginning, uh, when the rock is produced, there is more uranium. Uh, how much uranium? How much more uranium? Uh, we see here will be one milligram plus how much more? How much more depends on how much lead we have for for today. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, we have this uh, K or equals ln2 divided by T1 half. So we are, we are given the T1 half for uranium 238, the 4.5 times 10 to the 49 years. Uh, so therefore, we, we do the conversion, we will find out this K will be 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10, one over years. All right, so now we will just uh, uh, put this K here and calculate what is T. Yeah, I think uh, that's a good question. So I, as I uh, know from, uh, uh, Usually, my previous class, so that is the uh, confusing part to find out um, you know, why we use one milligram of uranium 238 for null. Uh, kind of, you see, the question tell you uh, for every one milligram of uranium 238, there is a, there is a 0.2 some gram of, uh, of lead. Uh, so if you think about the for now, you still have this ratio. Let's see, you assume you have one milligram for uranium-238. And uh, so, so at the beginning, there's more, there will be more than one milligram, right? Because the, the uranium decay. And uh, how much more you have at the beginning, if you think about right now, you have one gram, one milligram, you have to see uh, how much lead do you have? Because you assume all the lead come from that uranium decay. Um, right. Um, so now we can use our number for k uh, for k naught. So we will use one point zero zero divided by one point two nine seven equals negative one point five four times ten to the negative ten one over year times t. So that's obviously you, you take this number divide and you will get uh, what is what is t. So and of this number will become negative zero point on the left side of this equation. Uh, so ln this number divided by this is negative zero point two six zero that equals one point negative one point five four times ten to the negative ten the unit is one over year times t. So then you divide that out, you will find out what is t. Okay, so negative 0 0.260 divided by Negative one point five four ten to the ten power negative ten power one over a year. So that equals a t, and then you find out a t equals one point seven times ten to the forty nine year or one point seven billion years. Okay, I think it's kind of a very tedious problem. The most difficult. Uh, step is uh, as the question, uh, uh, so you have to uh, be able to uh, uh, take this uh, one milligram as uh, the uh, one milligram of uranium we have for today, then use one milligram plus uh, the uranium decay to get the uranium at the beginning of the rock. 
Okay, so next question is uh, similar. You uh, use the uh, integrated rate law to find out time. Uh, so this question, I think the difficult part is understanding this word. Um, so you have this example, radioactive waste has decreased to this much of initial value. So by the key word of means multiply, multiply. Yeah, whenever you see the keyword like 35.2% of initial, that means 35.5% time initial. So you can assume in like that uh, at the initial, you have uh, um, initial value is 100. Uh, so that means uh, the initial, let's say the initial, uh, initial, let's say the initial DPS, this integration per second, right? So that will be the rate zero, let's say rate zero. The initial is zero, okay? And then, so what will be the rate T? So no, or today. So by this keyword of, so you just take 35.2% means 35.2 divided by 100 times initial, initial if you assume 100, then 100. So this DPS. So therefore that will become 0. Uh, or that will become uh, 0. 0.352 times 100, so equals 35.2. So that will equals rate t. Okay, so now we have our rate t, our rate zero, and this, by the way, also the dps. So uh, we were using this equation, so our integrated rate now will be rate t and uh, rate zero equals negative kt. Okay, now we know we have this number, we have this number, we want to find t, we don't have the k yet. So we have three problems now, we have to find k, right? So what is k? Okay, ln2 divided by T one half. So Aaron two for this problem, your T one half is thirty point two years. So that'll give you zero point zero two two nine five and about unit here year to the negative one. So you're gonna be on a MacBook or an iPad, put a bigger down if you've been to five or more different countries in your lifetime. Okay, so now we will have our 35.2 TPS. divided by 100 TPS equals negative 0 0.02295 year to negative 1 times T. So T is your unknown. All right, so you take this 35.2 divided by 100, take the algorithm, get negative 1.044, have no unit, equals negative 0 0.2295 year to the negative 1 equals times t. So therefore, negative 1.044 divided by 0 0.2, that is 0. So from 0, Two two nine five year to the negative one equal to t. All right, so you find out t is forty five point five year. Yeah, so that's our answer. And this is multiple choice. Answer is d. All right, any questions? Okay, uh, so uh, 
this was a radio tracers. Radio tracers are radio isotope used to study a chemical reaction. So an uh, element can be followed through a reaction to determine its path and better understand the mechanism of chemical reaction. I just give you some idea. We don't have any like questions regarding that. Radio nucleotides react uh, chemically exactly the same as the non radioactive nuclei of the same element. Medical application of video tracers is uh, video tracers have found wide diagnostic uh, use in medicine. Uh, radio isotopes are admitted treated to a patient, usually intravenous state and followed. So certain elements are collecting more in certain tissues, so an organ or tissue type can be studied based on where the radioactivity collected. And those are the common radio nucleotides used in medicines. Uh, so you can see there is another example is the positron emission uh, tomography called the PET scan. Uh, so adding that, uh, we find out, uh, so the positron emitter usually they use is the fluorine 18. Uh, so usually they use in fluorine 18, for example, in sodium fluoride. So you can just use in the IOA, eject into the IOA or the uh, fluorodeoxy glucose, uh, et cetera, to inject into a patient. So then you study like uh, in some of those uh, organic chemistry, so the fluorine can replace uh, OH. You know, glucose has like six OH group in it, so you can do some of those chemical reactions to replace the OH by fluorine, so therefore the fluorine is the radioactive or the positron emitters. And uh, so just give you some idea that video chemistry is also very active uh, uh, discipline. Uh, so this section about energy in nuclear reactions. Uh, so there's a tremendous amount of energy stored in nuclear eye because uh, this Einstein's famous equation, so E equals mc squared, and the C is the speed of light which is a huge number. Uh, so therefore, I want to square that, so that will give you a really, really large number uh, for the energy. 10 to the 48 meter per second. Uh, so the mass will be in kilogram, uh, speed of light, and then we know the conversion between gram and AMU. You know this number? Our government number, right? Um, so therefore, if you have, uh, so in, 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 for example, in, in every one more of you, you know, 238 to, to sodium 234, there is a loss of this much energy. Then you can calculate that much loss of energy is how much uh, joules or kilojoules by using this equation, right? Uh, so to use this equation, you know, this, uh, is a mass or delta mass should be in kilograms. So you just converting this into how much kilograms, so this will become negative. Uh, so as right, right now it's a negative uh, 4.6 times 10 to the negative three gram. Then you divide by 1,000, so it becomes negative 4.6 times 10 to the negative six kilograms. Uh, so therefore we will use this uh, for, 4.6 10 to the negative 6 kilogram, then times the speed of light. Uh, so what, what you get is this gigantic number, so which means 410 billion kilojoules. Uh, so where the joules come from? Where the joules come from the unit, so you can see straight forward there's a kg kilogram, then you have this uh, m over second squares, so that become kg uh, times, uh, you square the meter per second, which means you square them separately, right? So you, you square the, 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 this in the meter, so then s. You don't have to write a one, uh, so. So just write the units. So the units you get 
is a kilogram times a meter. So this this m is a meter. S is second. So by definition, so this equals j or joules. All right. Uh, also, the negative sign is a unit. So as what we studied in chapter six. Uh, so by convention, if we absorb energy means plus, if we need means negative or release. Okay, so the so this mass loss or mass defect is uh, uh, is uh, where we get the energy from the nuclear plant, nuclear power plant, or nuclear uh, weapons. So the mass of nuclear eye are always less than those of uh, individual parts. Uh, so the mass difference is called the mass defect. The energy needed to separate a nucleus into its uh, component, nucleons. So nucleons, uh, so they are protons or neutrons. We call them together nucleons. Uh, so this table tells us the binding energy uh, of uh, three types of nucleus. And obviously, if you see the total binding energy, so uranium-38 has a lot of number. So this is total in that one nucleus. Uh, but you divide per nucleon. So in this guy, you have uh, uh, you have 238 nucleons. So you take this number divided by 238, and that one has 56, that only have four. You end up, so this uh, RN, uh, uh, 56 has the largest number per nucleon. And uh, I want to emphasize this because this really gives those uh, scientists some idea about uh, how to uh, make uh, some of those uh, nuclear reactions that uh, called the fission, uh, or some, some of those called the fusion. Fusion means split, fusion means come together. Uh, because they all come compare with this uh, uh, RN56. So RN56, or uh, in this region, uh, not, not in particular, just only one FE56, but near this uh, atomic number, so that has the largest uh, binding energy. And then the larger nuclear uh, nucleus, you are going to uh, fusion, split apart, the small one when the fuse come together to become the most stable. Uh, for example, this uh, Fe56. All right, uh, probably we'll finish this question, then we'll do a, a clicker question. Uh, so for this problem is, uh, we are given this chemical equation, and um, then we give the atomic mass of our reactant uh, with this guy, then the product with this guy, then this guy. Uh, so then, uh, we want to see how much energy it is released when one gram of this product decay to, uh, oh, this reaction decay to this product. So to solve this problem, uh, you just, uh, uh, let us see, find out the mass loss first. For one atom for one atom of this uh, plutonium 238. Uh, so that's kind of simple. So that will equals the mass of product, which is 4.001506. Uh, so that's one product. The other product is uranium 238. So 238.0, uh, uranium 234, sorry. 
So it's meant to 34. 234.040946. Then minus the red paint, which is uh, plutonium 238, 238.0454. Uh, so that 0 0.00 and uh, AMU. So next you are starting with this negative 0 0.007103 AMU and do our conventions. So our conversion is going to use this guy. Uh, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23 AMU, which is one gram. And you want to convert into kilogram. Okay. So one 1,000 gram is one kilogram. And that will become negative 1.18 times 10 to the negative 29 kilogram. Okay, so that is the how much mass loss for one uh, uh, uranium two, uh, plutonium 238 decays. Uh, so next, you just use the Einstein formula. So find okay, out. Back to the last slide. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so next we use Einstein formula to find out our energy uh, release for one atom. So mass, you see the, you get the kilograms 1.18. Let me rewrite that. So E equals mc squared equals our m is negative uh, 1.18 times 10 to the negative 29 kJ. So our C is typical 3 times 10 to the positive 8 meter per second square squared. So that become negative 1.06 times 10 to the negative 12 joule per atom. Okay, so next you just uh, find out in one gram of uh, plutonium 238, there's a whole much atom of plutonium 238. So, as we did before, we can use 238 as a very good approximation as a model mass for the plutonium 238. Then, you see, one more is 6.02. 10 to the positive 23 of atoms. So therefore, for one gram of uranium, uh, plutonium 238, actually we have this much of atom in it. And now, if you have for one atom that can reduce this much fuel, uh, and then multiply by the total number of atom, And one atom. So atom atom comes out. So get how much uh, how much juice. Uh, so probably before I finish this, use this uh, equal sign because all the multiple choice is a kilo juice. So let's do one more conversion. So we have juice. So we divide by one thousand and get how many kilo juice. So therefore, you get a 2.69 times 10 to the 6 kilojoules, and the answer is B. Okay, I think we'll stop here for this uh, uh, this lecture, and I will show you the critical question. If you did it right as what we did Tuesday, I will give you two points. If you don't do it right, I shall give you one point. Okay, so let me go to the 
that slide and show you the question. Oh, I have not start. I did not started those um, pool question yet. So I will show you the question. You you see the question. Let me go to the pool everywhere website and start it. Uh, that that those pools. Okay, so I'll show you the question. Okay, so here's the question. Can you see it? Okay, so now let me also get the website. Let me minimize my this part. I heard the question. You work on that. Don't don't enter any answer yet. Okay, but I have not started that question yet. That's the guy. Let me activate. Then I can start. But that's only for one class. Okay. Uh, so hold on, just work on that. And uh, when I said you can go, then you can go. Okay, so let me show that. So that one is done. Go into the other class. Let's see one more time. I need to use the full screen to activate this question. So I can go out. So don't enter any answer yet, but some of the class has not started yet. One more pass. Take one more time. Okay, so all the classes are activity. Uh, you can enter the answer now. And we can't see the question. Oh, you cannot see the question? Can you see the question now? No. Uh, on the on the screen, I share the screen. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I figured it out. Okay. 